We're with Northwestern track and field coach Mike Heimerman, whose teams competed in the Southland Conference Championships very well. The women third, the men fifth, uh, hitting your targets. Uh, coach, uh, um, before we talk about the team accomplishment, we have to start with Justin Walker's world class. There's no other way to say it. 100-meter uh, dash time, the best in the world this year, 9.95. Um, put into words what that means to you and to this program. Well, first of all, it's amazing. Uh, you know, there's been some ups and downs uh, with uh, with Justin in the program and, and the coaching staff, uh, but it's just like we've we talked before. We're one big family. Well, families are going to have ups and downs, and uh, bumps and bruises, and we learn from it. And all parties have learned from some things this year. And Justin's grown. And coaches have grown. It, it, you know, stuff that we've talked about. Justin's bought into the program, into the into the training, and uh, it's something we've talked about a few times. The, the, his just progression has been quicker, quicker, quicker. He's been healthier. And we told him he could go sub 10 this year. And, uh, you know, just needed the, the right conditions and everything to set up. And it happened, you know, we're on a fast track. The wind was a little strong, but not much. That was something Justin and I were talking about on the way over here. You know, 2.5 is not much over the 2.0. And, uh, you know, to run that fast, it, it's just, you know, amazing. And, uh, you know, there's a, what's crazy or amazing, even more amazing, he can probably run faster. Uh, still stepping up into his program because he was still training through that meet a little bit. Other, uh, some why some of our athletes were trying to peak at that meet. So uh, there could still be some more fireworks left in uh, Justin's tank this year. So just keep tuned. Okay, let's turn the emphasis to the team. Uh, certainly his uh, scoring and performances, winning the 100, 200, and uh, leading the four by one to a win were critical for your men to finish fifth, right on their target. Talk about the men's performance. Well, I'll shoot down it really quick. You know, Justin winning the one and the two in uh, just about record-setting fashions was, was a huge key for us. We started off the finals day great with a four by one. He had an awesome uh, third leg. Uh, we, we made up a lot of ground in his third leg. We had two freshmen, Shakir Ryan. That was only his second race as a collegiate athlete. And uh, he ran a little tense. And uh, Ty uh, Schilling, our anchor, ran tense because uh, he kind of tweaked the uh, ab in the javelin late the night before. Uh, and then, you know, Keenan Jackson uh, ran a great second leg. So, you know, that kind of set the tempo. And the women right before that actually kind of helped it out, kicked it off because they ran a season best time. And they feed off each other. So, you know, everybody wants to outdo each other. So, you know, that set off the day. And then Justin in the 100. We had uh, Brent Giddings in the 110 hurdles, barely getting edged out for uh, third and fourth. It was a tight, tight race. Um, then we had Keenan Jackson in the 400. He was a little gassed because we tried to do the 2-4 combo. Uh, you know, he just ran out a little bit too early, but, uh, you know, he still ran, a, if he'd ran his uh, prelim time, he'd got third, but he ended up seventh. Uh, Aaron Williams matched his PR in the triple jump, uh, got second, got beat out on the last jump by the competitor, but that's what competitors do. They rise to the occasion, and, uh, you know, they went back and forth a couple of times. So it was a great competition. Um, with that, Zaquan Porter, I think, finished seventh in the triple jump, best meet of the season, and that's what he did the year before. So as a sophomore, that's how how you kind of want it. You want to show up at the biggest meet. Uh, so, you know, in the 4x4, four four, Justin wanted to help the team and stepped up. That was only the second time he's ran it. Ran the fastest leg. It was warm. I mean, Conway gave us the, the, almost a full gauntlet of Mother Nature. Only thing we didn't have was cold weather and snow. But we had everything else and all in-betweens, and it was a hot and muggy, humid day, which we're kind of used to. But we weren't quite ready for it that day. So it, everybody was getting a little fatigued and cramping up. For the most part, we did a great job, but a couple of our kids were just a little fatigued and we didn't quite what we ran what we wanted to run in the 4x4. Four four. We could have been fourth as a men's team. We ended up fifth, and that's where we wanted. For the amount of kids that we took up there and, the, and what we had, I was very proud of them, very proud of the coaching staff for getting those kids in, that, in the position to do what they did. Lady Demons, as usual, uh, good scoring in the throws and uh, school record performance in the 400 hurdles and lots of other highlights for your women. You know, it was, it was another great weekend for the women. You know, we started off with the 4x1, uh, then we moved into the uh, 400. Queena, Queana Griffin kind of slacked up a little bit at the end, got a little fatigued, and uh, you know, ended up fourth. Still had her, uh, one of her fastest times of the year, if not the fastest. And then uh, Consuela Lindsay, uh, she actually got tight on the, on the home stretch. Uh, started worrying about it. Uh, she started cramping in the hamstring and uh, started getting tight and still beat her school record by a half a second. If she would have stayed loose and kept going, she probably would have ran one of the fastest times in the nation this year. So, you know, I think we've, you know, she's qualified. I think she's setting ninth going into the regional meet. She's going to drop a faster time this year because now that's all she has to worry about is the is 400 hurdles. Uh, we don't have to worry about 4x1 or the 4x4. Four four. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, that was a good meet for the runners because uh, 4 by 4 we're a little banged up. We had a couple fresh uh, freshmen and a sophomore run on it, and they just kind of they ran some some good legs, but we just ran out of gas a little bit. They ended up, I think, sixth. That's a little bit out of character for our women's four by four, but you know we can't always be on top. Uh, in the um, field events, and we had a great jumps day out of uh, Portia Thomas. You know she PRs by almost I think as a foot, almost two feet. It was a uh, you know I think she went 41.7, and her PR before that was like 40 foot half inch, a quarter inch, something like that. So it was a great day. She responded because she was getting beat going into the last jump. She responds and wins it, and she swept the indoor and outdoor titles this year. And then uh, Taylor Walker, freshman, has a good year, uh, ends up eighth. You know, indoor she was second, but uh, you know she had some she had tonsillitis this year and uh, put her out for about a month. So you know, for her to come back and respond, still very happy for a true freshman to score. So uh, that was great. In the throws, we had a, another good weekend. We had uh, some problems with uh, rain and weather and some foot fouls that they called uh, discus. We went one two. With uh, Shelly, uh, Rochelle Bessard and uh, Shakimia Johnson winning or going one two. Uh, they threw the finals in the dark. They didn't have lights and uh, kind of threw everybody off because if you look at the results, uh, all for all the competitors, their final three throws were horrible, and it was just missing marks. Kids couldn't see what they were doing in the ring. So, but we got the the first and second place finishes that we wanted, and we we had some season best and right out of season best. Uh, shot put, uh, we were pretty good. Uh, uh, Keona Jackson got second. Uh, we just couldn't. She was rushing everything because she wanted to throw so far so bad and, uh, you know, messed up the timing a little bit. We, we still held on to second. Kwanzaa Andres uh, came in for ninth. Uh, she came, she finished better than she was ranked, you know, true freshman. So, you know, we had a, we had a pretty good week in, uh, in the Javelin. It was another good event for us. Um, Jessica Talley won. Uh, so that was her first meet of the year for us. She regained her eligibility right there the day before. So uh, she came in and won. And then uh, uh, rounding out the uh, top eight for us was uh, Ashley Aldridge, uh, coming in off of a year and a half uh, absence with uh, uh, surgery and then having a baby. Uh, so it, it was a good day uh, for us. But uh, you know, it ended up uh, third. We could have scored probably another 15 to 20 points, maybe 25 on the women's side, 10 on the men. Uh, would have probably finished a place better on the men's side. Women's side would have stayed third, uh, and that's where we're wanting. You know, we're, those were our goals walking into the meet. For the amount of bullets we took to that meet, I was very happy happy for all the women, happy for the uh, men, and very happy with the coaching staff and all the hard work they put in this year. All right, looking forward, what's uh, ahead for the team? Uh, we're taking uh, most of the guys and girls that are qual uh, qualified for the regional meet, we're going to take them to a, a last chance meet uh, just to kind of keep some of the things moving. Uh, some of the kids will go and just train because the coaching staff will be there. Uh, the four by one men are going to run, uh, as uh, Justin was talking earlier. Uh, Shakir Ryan, that was his first meet, or second meet, so first time running with the a, a uh, team. We just got to get his top end speed worked out. We can clean up a few handoffs and then tie only worrying about the 4x1 and not the 100 and the javelin. I think we can drop, uh, Justin and I were talking about, we could probably go 39 low, maybe 39.1, 39.2. We do that, we're setting ourselves up to be top five in the nation. Uh, so that's one of the goals. And right now, women's disc, we're uh, setting right at the cutoff with both uh, Shelly, uh, Rochelle, and uh, Shakimia uh, on the bubble on making it in. So we're going to let those two uh, have another opportunity uh, to increase that and uh, they need just the reps just to get into that that competition and uh, so we'll, we'll have everybody work out in Georgia Tech and get a little bit bigger feel because that's going to be a little bit uh, bigger meet get them set up ready uh, to go into uh, Jacksonville at North Florida for regionals. All right thanks coach. Thank you. We're here this morning with Justin Walker who for the moment is the world's fastest man. How does that sound? Sounds pretty good to me. Um, yesterday or this weekend in uh, Conway, Arkansas, at the Southland Conference Championships, you were a part of three championship uh, performances, two individually and on the 4 by 100 meter relay team. Uh, also ran a 4 by 4 leg in the conference championships, but uh, certainly the headline grabber is the 100 meter dash, uh, and you ran the fastest time in the world this year. Uh, certainly when you ran your prelim time on Saturday and it was a 10-16 and you let up in the last 10 meters, um, there was a feeling that you could really run a big time on Sunday. So how confident were you that was going to unfold and you were going to run the best time of your life? Well, prelims coming in, uh, I got a good feel for the track. So uh, Coach Mike did a good job of putting up the little safety bags for me to run into. That way I didn't run over the fence or anything like that. So for finals day, I knew I could just run all out. And I had a, big, a great big jump the first, the first 10 meters. So after that, it was just arm movement and turning over. So 
kind of knew I was going to have a big day. All right. For those of us who aren't fast, take us through that race uh, from even pre-start to the finish and what made that such a great race for you. All right. Well, first it was the mental aspect. Uh, I never can go into a race uh, very serious. So, you know, just clowning around beforehand. And uh, when they did the call to get down your blocks, just envision what it is I practice every day, which is big jump, big arm movement, closing the gap quick. And so just envision myself doing that beforehand. And when the gun shot, it was all instinct after that. So had a big jump, great arm movement, and I was able to drive for about 40, 50 meters, which is something I usually don't get to do. And after that, when I stood up, it was, I just felt great. So I just kept going. Okay, as you're coming down the stretch and Obviously, you know you're running well. Uh, a lot of times you haven't finished because of, well, you're trying to save yourself for the next race or this or that. You finished this race. Yeah, this, this time it was can't leave anything out there. And then it was Mother's Day, so I had to give my mom a present that she would like. I'd say that made her happy. Now, that was your second race of the day. The 4 by one I think you feel and maybe coaches feel too, that may have been your best race in the third leg. Yeah, that was that was definitely a a great experience because we had two freshmen on the relay and they wanted to win so bad it just it just pumped me up even more to want to go out there and run fast and once I got the stick it was just it, nothing mattered but go out there and win. All right and then you cap it off with the 200 uh, uh, dominated that race uh, talk about that race for a moment. Yeah well I was a little fatigued from the 100 and 4x1 and I didn't have the best of starts but my turnover was able to help me get out in front, so can't really complain too much, but bigger things yet to come for that. Okay. Now, stepping back from it and taking it in, understanding what happened yesterday with the 9.95 and the world's fastest time this year, the fastest time in college track this year, how do you process that? What does that mean to you? Well, I'm still kind of in shock, but my main thing is just to stay grounded. I mean... I want to I want to be the fastest man in the world period anyway so I have to learn how to handle moments like this and I just want to keep working hard cuz that's not my cap so I want to keep getting better and for a guy who went through reconstructive knee surgery to come back and do this what does it mean to you it means a lot it just it just shows me how much hard work pays off and that with the right support you can do anything okay let's go forward now uh, got a last chance meet for the relay team and then on the regional and national championships hopefully talk about what your immediate future is. Well first and foremost we have to clean up the four by one and get get certain people in in the right shape and just go out there and execute and that's what we're going to do at this Georgia meet and after that it's regional so no times matter once you get to regionals it's all about what you do that day so we have to go out there and execute that day too and just keep progressing getting better Hopefully we'll go like 39-6. That way we can get into Nationals, and in Nationals we can, we can do something crazy and shock the world. All right, if you had to tell somebody what happened yesterday in about 10, 15 words, what would you say? Uh, about 10, 15 words? I can just give it in one, greatness. How surprised were you? I, I was ecstatic. It was, it was a shock to me. So it was a... It was a surprise. It was Yeah, it was a surprise because my coaches all believed in me that I can go nine and it was just about the timing of it and couldn't have come at a better time. So what about Mother's Day? It was great. Um, my mama called me, left me a funny voicemail, talking about, Oh boy, you kicked butt today. So you know, I love my mama, so it was good to give her something like that. I think y'all will both remember that one. Yes we will. All right, congratulations, Justin. Thank, Thank you. you.